Oh man, this place is swarming with enemies. Yep. <laughs> I was lucky I didn't get ambushed. Like, you know, like surprised. Okay, so again, when you come up against the petrified royal guard, or really en any enemy that comes out of a casket here, you paralyze it. Other than the guardian general, he can't be paralyzed. Maybe, but you know what? They're really not strong enough that I. It's not worth it. Yes, like I said, I got a lot of those this session. So when you go down the hole, um, you're almost at the end. There's like one b more big room left. Okay. And you will not. You won't get a chance to save at the end, but you will get a full heal. Okay. And you'll get a chance to save soon after. Yes. I never like it in games where you have to go to a lot of places and there's hardly any save points to find because you can just die at any point. Well, Earthbound is slightly more merciful than most games in that regard. A lot of times if you die, you will... You won't... It'll, like... If you die... It, 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 for example, let me try to think of something. If you, like, it, the, if you defeated a boss, that boss will remain defeated. Oh, that's good. Um, you will lose half of your money, and you will revive in some, and you may revive kind of far from where you were, but, and, like, all the characters besides Ness will be will still be knocked out, but any progress you made in the quest will will stick. And any experience points you got will will stick. Yeah, so the big penalty is the money you lose and the fact that you have to revive everyone else. Also Ness will have zero PP. So yes, and Pooh gained a pretty nice level. Jeff, on the other hand, needs hit points. Badly. Nom nom nom. Yeah, okay, here's where I decided to use Paralysis Alpha rather than Omega. <clears throat> because I realized, okay, Ness is going to get two turns before either one of them gets a turn, so I might as well save 8 PP. <laughs> Why not? Because Omega costs 24, Alpha costs 8, so 16 if you use it twice. <clears throat> not that conserving PP is that big a deal at this point, because we're almost at the end. Which is good. <clears throat> Yeah, so... Both of them are right. Paralysis in this game is, like, not very useful in most situations, but when it is useful, it's extremely useful, because most enemies that can be paralyzed can't do anything when they're paralyzed. So in, like, this area, it's good to use paralysis. Yeah, on these two types of enemies that are in this battle. Like, there are other enemies, like... Actually, some bosses can be paralyzed, too. Mondo Mole can be paralyzed. Um, Thunder and Storm, I don't know if Paralysis actually works on them, but they can be paralyzed if you use Flash Beta. Or Stronger. Actually, actually, I said this when I fought Thunder and Storm, but I have beaten Thunder and Storm just by using Flash, and they just get knocked out. Oh, there's one boss coming up that Zenav 14 beat in the most hilarious way I have ever seen. When I get to that boss, I'll explain what he did. And maybe try to duplicate it myself, but I don't... It, it seems like... Basically, he got the boss to kill itself. It's, it's in a part that's coming up pretty soon, actually. Oh, nice. 
What am I doing now? Oh, you're, I think you're dumping off some stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, earlier I picked up a diamond band from one of the caskets. Then I looked, it's like, great, everyone except Pooh is already wearing a diamond band. <laughs> <laughs> so what point is that? Yeah, like I've mentioned, equipment is generally not useful to Pooh. It will actually decrease his stats. The only things useful to him are equipment items that end in of kings. I see. Because he's royal. Yes, he is a prince. Well, it's sort of like him with food items. Most food items will only restore six hit points to him, even if they restore hundreds to someone else. Another useless item. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I just use a lot of it. I'm like, figure, might as well get rid of it. Yeah, I think this is the end. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just thinking of what Guybrush Threepwood says in, in one part of Monkey Island. He's like, I think I can do without that particular piece of junk. <laughs> have you played that game? There's a whole puzzle where you have to negotiate with this sleazy used boat salesman. Okay, this is the... I think he's called, like, the Star Monk or something like that. You saw him in Dalam before, uh, Moo training. And he takes Pooh away from your party. He will have... He will have something very cool when he comes back, but he will be gone for a while. Yeah, I'm not sure why they decided to do this, rather than just having him learn that power normally. Um, maybe it's for story effect? I don't know. Could be, but... So we're not moving for a bit. Yeah, okay, so there was a guy in Scaraba who... Um... Said that... He, who thought he had the, this key and had lost it. That guy with the spear picked it up. Ah, that's good. You need that key. Like, whoops, I do not have enough money. <laughs> However, I can sell some of the stuff that I don't need. Fortunately, diamond bands are rather expensive. Nice. And I don't need that either. <laughs> I just... Have you seen any videos that show the Saturn Valley area? I've seen a few, yeah. The stuff that the Mr. Saturn say is just so funny. <laughs> Not just that, but the way it looks, how they say Yes, the Saturn font. It's hard. I can't imagine being able to write or to draw that. It's ridiculous. I don't know. You could probably just ask a kid to do it. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, now I'm buying. And I realize, oh wait, Jeff's inventory is full. So I'll sell something. Or I decide not to sell something and just give something in his inventory to someone else instead. <laughs> yeah, all those secret herbs aren't that useful anymore because now I have a PSI power <laughs> that has that effect. You know how some people in the middle of the deserts can just have stuff ready for you and you can just like buy or sell stuff. <laughs> it reminds me of the version of Evil 4. I mean, here's this guy, you don't know much about him, but he has all these weapons and stuff. It's like, whoa. Alright. So again, I'm just making sure I don't miss anything important. Okay. Marauder Octobot. These guys aren't that powerful. They can steal stuff from you in the middle of battle, though, so that's kind of annoying. 
Now, I took, I just took a wild guess and, you know, wanted to see if that guy had a shield on, and he does not. Yeah. So I'm guessing those work for guy guess. Right, the robots you meet generally work for Gaigas, with the exceptions being the sentry drones in the Monotoli building and the clumsy robot. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that statue over there. She's like trying to take a step down or something. Yeah, we'll be seeing more of that. Oh, good. Now, this is another enemy that dodges attacks often. Not as often as those UFOs, but still at an annoying rate. And down he goes. Of course, Naspala and Jeff will be getting slightly more experience now that they are only three party members. Most of it probably was going to. Well, no, they were splitting it evenly, but Pooh is getting levels more quickly. Okay, so you can go in this if you have the key. Ah, so that's the important Yes, so you enter through his uh, groin area. <laughs> hey guys, remember who Brick Road is? I think. He's that sort of. He's that guy with the mustache that you meet at Winters the first time you go through it. He mentioned that he was going to ask Dr. Ann Donuts to make him Dungeon Man. Ah. Now he is Dungeon Man. Ah, that makes sense. I I'm seriously wondering if if the Brothers Chaps from HomestarRunner.com took the name from took, took that to, to you know name their game have you ever played any of those games, Thy Dungeon Man? Um, Home Star Runner games? Yes. Um, I've seen a few, I haven't played them. Basically, there is an email. Now I'm I'm just dumping some useless stuff on Escargo Express, like items that you can't get rid of, but you don't need anymore. Which is an understandable. I mean, you, you have a pretty full inventory, so you're gonna have to get rid of some stuff. Right, and now that I have one fewer party member, there's less space to spare. So there was an email, you know, an email that Strongbat answered, and the person asked, if you were in a video game, what would it, what would it be like? And what would you look like? Something like that. And he gave several examples of, of different genres of video games, and one of the ones he... I was thinking about getting rid of the key to the tower, but I thought, wait, what if I do that and then I can't get back in? Then I'd be totally screwed. Actually, yeah, these things come from for the Foresight department store when the department store spook took it over. In other words, they're enemies from way back in the game and they're very weak. Nope. <laughs> yeah, the enemies in this dungeon, most of them are very weak. There is one exception. Um, so, one of the genres of games that Strongbad describes is like the text based adventure. It's like, you find yourself in a dungeon. You see a. on a. something or other, you see a flask. Obvious exits are North, South, and Dennis. And you'd be like, get ye flask. And the game would be like, you cannot get ye flask. <laughs> and you're like, and you just have to wonder why on earth you can't get ye flask. <laughs> that is a good question. Why can't I get ye flask? And, and in the Dungeon Man game, at least in the third one, get ye flask becomes the goal of the game. <laughs> But so it, it, a lot of stuff around here looks like the thing that you've seen or have. Yes, yeah, so if you notice, I got Jeff just repaired a uh, something to make a new weapon right after I bought another one. <laughs> and this, the one he just fixed is stronger. Good night, Ben. So you can sleep.
shape here, actually. Yes, and I... I think I was trying to make him fix something else, and you get the slime generator, which isn't that useful, but it's probably worth keeping. It immobilizes enemies for one turn. 